Hello, so today we're going to do a video on the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. This video is going to be split up in two parts, but it's going to have the same introduction for each of them for the front and the rear brakes. I'm going to be doing a full brake job, including the parking brakes, which are uh, prone to failure. So the first thing we'll look at is the uh, brake discs that I picked up, or brake rotors, whatever you want to call them. So these are CarQuest Platinum Plus. I always try to buy the best brakes that I can afford to put on a vehicle. Because it seems like it's always my luck that as soon as I put on new brake rotors, I'll be going down some big long hill and I'll go and warp them on the first shot. So if you buy good rotors, they're always going to give you a much better warranty on them. And I've never had to return anything from CarQuest. So that's uh, the road I'm going. These ones are coated. If you weren't buying coated rotors, they'd be covered in oil. So you'd have to hose them off with brake fluid or brake cleaning fluid. It's got the minimum thickness here, 28.5 millimeters, for this particular rotor. This is the front, it's vented. It comes in a nice uh, packaging. I don't know if this is uh, chemically uh, controlled for uh, protecting rotors or not. This is the uh, rear. On this vehicle, it's got a parking brake is on the inside of here. And again, it's coated all the way around. If it wasn't coated, it'd be covered in oil, you'd have to clean it off and then paint it so that it didn't rust up right away. Depending on the type of wheels you've got, it shows more than others. But I always tend to paint them when I put them on the vehicle. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the receipt from buying this. So this is something that you may or may not be aware of or not. But when you go into a store and pay cash, they always have an account called uh, Preferred Cash Customer wherever you go and if they don't put you down as preferred cash customer at the store get them to bill it out to a garage or something so basically what I do is I tell them everything I need and they give me a price and then I'll tell them well can you do any better I'll buy everything if you give me a good price and this usually works out in my favor so this price on uh, one of these rotors this is Canadian dollars in 2020 was 121 a rotor and I got them for 86 so as you can see like I saved 35 dollars on each of the rotors and uh, you save a lot of money by doing this you can easily save a uh, hundred bucks on a brake job so like I said always make a relationship with the place you're buying parts from and always go back to them I don't tend to shop around like I use CarQuest, which has got another name in the States, but you can still buy CarQuest parts. You go down to Napa. If you're a Napa person, that's fine. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter to me. But I tend to buy the best parts that they've got and try to make a relationship with them so that uh, I get good pricing. They recognize my voice on the phone or my name when I introduce myself when I call. I try to be uh, very polite with them, and it works out really well. I've saved thousands of dollars by doing that. Or I order online if you want to go that route too. So uh, we'll take a look at uh, what we've got here. Might as well look at the uh, brake pads first. So again, these are the uh, platinum, the high-end ones. So these are the uh, parking brakes. I'm just going to tighten this thing up here so it doesn't flop around. You get a set of those. You need to buy the uh, kit separately. It comes with some white looking grease, I assume for the threads. You get the uh, brake pads here. They also come with a bit of uh, grease, which is good. Come with the stainless sliders. I can't read that language. Maybe it's in English on the other side, I'm not too sure. And when you look at the pads, They've got a burnishing compound on them to break them in onto the rotors. It doesn't take very much by the looks of it. Some of them have a uh, scratching pad there to make noise to tell you when the uh, pad is worn out. You can measure that. I don't know how many millimeters that is. So that would be your matching pair. Now you wouldn't normally put the uh, grease on a pad that's got any coating on it. If it's a stainless shim or whatever this stuff is, you're probably going to use the grease on these parts here, which we'll see as we get 
putting things together. So those are pretty small. I think those are probably the rear. Besides that, always get lots of uh, brake clean so you can clean the rotors off. The brake dust, whether it has asbestos or not, you're not supposed to breathe it. So you're going to want to hose everything off onto like a piece of cardboard and throw it out. You don't want to hose it off on the floor and then sweep it up later. It's not good for your health. I always buy the non-chlorinated brake fluid or brake cleaner. So uh, it's not as poisonous if you heat it up. I bought some uh, lubricant. I wasn't sure if it came with these pads or not, but it turns out it does. So this is the way to go for any of this stuff because it's like a couple bucks or something. You got everything you need, you use it and you're done. You don't need to worry about storing it. Like this Loctite, I seem to buy like a bottle of it every time I use it. And it just goes bad. Like that's like four lifetime supply for somebody. So again, you can just get a pouch of the uh, red Loctite. I have that because I've got wheel spacers on this vehicle. So it's important to use uh, Loctite on them. Some uh, copper anti-seize. You can get the uh, gray stuff, whatever suits your purpose. So uh, if you're going to reuse your rotors, you'd use a micrometer to check them. So you could check that measurement I gave you initially across. But I just, I know that I pretty much destroy my rotors. Being in Canada, they rust and fall apart. It's not something that is a, a long-term purchase, so you just bin them. Need a torque wrench for the uh, wheels and the uh, wheel spacers. Metric wrenches. Use this for compressing the uh, brake calipers. Might need this to remove the uh, rotors depending on what's going on. I normally have a 10 pound sledgehammer, but I don't have one here to get the wheels off. But I, I normally I put the uh, anti-seize on the uh, centers of the wheel hub so they come off typically. But you might need a sledgehammer to remove the wheels. I did a video for my Honda Civic where I showed how to take the wheels off and you can see how I did that there. Need some earmuffs, some glasses, some gloves. I've got uh, impact sockets there. And then uh, I've got a three quarter inch impact gun underneath of the uh, brake pads here. You can certainly do it by hand. It's just going to take a bit longer. There's nothing wrong with that. And then some uh, wheel chocks. You should have uh, a wheel chalk for at least two of them. These ones are a little bit small. I think I read somewhere that a uh, OSHA requirement is that the wheel chalk has to reach like a quarter of the height of the wheel. So you can imagine with the transport truck that the wheel chocks would be gigantic. So I think that is going to be almost it for the introduction. One other thing to look at is that you'll need to get like a, a three-ton jack to do this job. You can probably do it with a smaller jack, but at the same time, you're working it pretty hard. So get a three-ton jack. I broke the wheels off of this one actually, unfortunately. So uh, I had it lifted up a, a car and then just tried to move it and I snapped the wheels off. So I've, it still works though. To drag it around on there. And you need a jack stand. It'd be better to have two when you're doing the back. If you have two, you can get both wheels off at the same time and use one as a reference to the other. If not, you can take pictures of the each side. Then I've got some uh, stainless diamond plate here. If you were putting your jack stand in the dirt, some jack stands have the corners, just uh, little plates welded onto it. But still, if you're in the dirt, it's better to just put it on a steel plate. So there's a factory that's uh, wrapping up a construction job. I've been buying stainless off of them lately. I got a pretty good collection of stainless. And then uh, I'm going from completely dead fried brakes. So when I clamp in my uh, brake uh, calipers, it's going to be a problem for the uh, master cylinder here. So this is going to probably end up overflowing. So you need to keep an eye on this as you're doing each wheel. And only do one wheel at a time, otherwise when you push in one caliper, it'll push the other caliper out on the other side and it could pop the, the uh, piston right out. So don't do that. So just do one wheel at a time. Other than, like I said, you can 
do some things to hold the pistons in with a C-clamp if you need to on the back to look at each side. So you could use a little vacuum pump to suck the brake fluid out of here to prevent it from overflowing. If it does overflow, you need to have a garden hose ready and hose down the whole area because this will remove the paint on your vehicle quite quickly. So that's uh, not good. So I guess I'll shut this off and now it's for 10 minutes in already just doing the introduction. We're going to take a a wheel off of here and get going on the front. And like I said, the other video is going to have the same introduction. And so I'll take the a back wheel off and start doing it on the back. All right, so we're going to do a little uh, introduction after the introduction here for the rear brakes. So you'll see that I've got a puller that I've made up for pulling the back drums off. This is going to be uh, the manufacturing of this is in a different video that you can take a look at on my channel. And there's a couple tools I didn't mention when I did the original introduction. So there's a couple of tools here for adjusting the uh, back parking brake shoes. And then this is like a universal kind of tool for doing automotive uh, springs on drum brakes. We might use that as part of this uh, job. And then uh, I'm also going to show you that I'm going to retorque my uh, wheel spacer. So I already did the one side. And it moved a little bit, set to 90 foot-pounds. You can see I've got it jacked up a little bit differently this time. I've got it by a lower control arm. You've got to be careful when you do that because the control arm on this vehicle is lifted. So it's on a bit of a funny angle, but there is a notch in there. And that is how you would change a tire on the side of the road. It, uh, the factory little jack locks into there. I've got about an hour on these brakes. Might as well just show you how the uh, burnishing worked out pretty happy with that. So it just uh, it wiped off the coating on the brake rotor there just where the uh, pad runs. And there's not a pile of uh, dust or garbage in the way. You can see that I greased it here as well. So we'll just go ahead and uh, torque the uh, wheel spacer one more time. I put this torque wrench away and I set it back to 90 foot-pounds. So there's a possibility that I just <clears throat> changed the torque a little bit. Pardon me by doing that. And when you're pushing down, you support with one hand and then down on the handle here. So I'm getting a bit of a turn. So I think it's worth it to take the wheel off and do this. It only takes about 10 minutes to do, if less, not less. And just go around again. And then I gotta put the wheel back on and then I'll torque it. And then again, the next day I have to retorque the wheel. So having wheel spacers does require a bit of extra torquing, but uh, it's just the nature of the beast. So uh, we'll get on to the back brakes now. All right, so it's time to take off the wheel here. So I just have the back of the vehicle lifted up by the differential. Then I put the uh, jack stand fairly far in so that I could get my head in and uh, release the parking brake and adjust it later on in the job. If you put your jack stand right up against the tire, it makes it uh, difficult to do a, a brake job. So this is going to be a bit more involved in the front brakes. So I'm putting the camera down closer so we can have a, a better view of what I'm working on. So just got the wheel and the wheel spacer off. Doesn't hurt to go to a car wash first. Save you some of the dust that comes off. Especially if you're working under the engine, or under the hood rather. So you don't want to get any dirt inside of the sealed components. So I'll put this underneath of the vehicle afterwards. Maybe you can see the condition of the brakes or not, but they're, they're toast.
So not too bad shape. So now I'll have to compress the uh, brake here. Not as much space to get the C-clamp on this uh, brake than the front. I think we can reach around here and get it. Try not to grab on to the uh, fitting. That's going to be the hard part. You don't want to grab on the brake fitting and then crush the uh, copper washer and create a leak. This is going in pretty nicely. I'll adjust the light here in a minute. You can see the heavy corrosion all around this thing. That's going to be the hardest part is getting this drum slash disc off of here. So that's nice and loose. Let's take the camera off so you can take a peek in there. Like I said, it's a bit more involved in the, the back brakes, without a doubt. Just adjust the light a little bit. There's a lot of corrosion on there. And you can see that I've only been using a tiny bit of the uh, braking surface. I think when we get the pads out of there, we'll see some despair. So that would be your wheel speed sensor, this smaller wire here, and your brake hose. So like I said, you don't want to clamp on to the end of the brake hose, which is hard to see. we got to do these two bolts here. I'll figure out what size those are and let you know. And... So these ones give you a, a thickness of 12 and a half millimeters if you're going to measure them, but obviously these are garbage. On the Jeep, you can't push on this because that's an access point for pulling out the axle shaft. So you don't want to mess around with that. You can buy replacements, but they come with new hubs if you buy a new hub and they're pre-installed. caliper. I'm going to guess 10 millimeter this time. See if I'm right. Here. Wrong again. It seems like I'm off by 2 millimeters these days. Yeah, these are 12. So again, when you got the wheel off and you're working on it, you want to just look things over and see if there's anything unusual going on. Like, are you missing any of your bump stops? Are your shocks broken? The uh, linkage is tight. And you can also look, because these hubs are bolted on, they're prone to leaking. So you'll need to look at that. They have an O-ring between them and the... Uh, Axle tubes. So this bolt's in pretty good shape. It's got some uh, lubricant on it still from the last time I had this off. I think, yeah, when I changed my master cylinder, I had to replace this caliper because the uh, bleeder broke on it. That's why this was uh, off last. single piston on this. Just put this on the uh, link here. It 
So the pad's starting to crack right there. And again, it's more like a wedge. It's very, very thin on this end. The piece is missing and thicker on that end. That seems to be pretty common for whatever reason with uh, the vehicles I drive. Now we need to get this off of here. So I'm just going to tap on it a little bit just to kind of jostle it. I don't want to damage the wheel bearing, so I've got that tool I showed you earlier. Now if you had working parking brakes, you'd have to go in from the back and adjust them. But I know mine are garbage, so we're not going to worry about them. I'm going to do. I can see it's popping a bit of the corrosion out of there. I'm just going to stop this for a minute and get the tool set up and then we're going to try to pull this off with the tool that I made. Alright so I got the tool set up. So I just I used a uh, wrench just to tighten on the uh, arms here and here. So these are tight. I used a hammer to kind of set this against the rotor as best I could. Just gonna put a bit of oil on here so it doesn't bind up because it's coming off. So we'll see uh, if this comes off or if it's not gonna be uh, worth the effort. Yeah, it's trying to pop off here. I was thinking about making a bar to go across if I had to. didn't expect it to be easy. I wasn't sure how hard it was going to be either. Sometimes it's good once you get some pressure on something is to tap on. So this may be, look like a failure, but it's actually, this will be one of the harder ones you'll see to have to take off. So we're going to be patient. We're going to keep working on it. And I'm sure this tool would work a lot better for you if it wasn't as far gone as this vehicle. This metal plate worked out to be really good size just to kind of fit in here and sit on the studs. It's easier to work. Sort of like a three arm job to do this. They have to be successful, so we're going to make it work. I think we got it.
So I haven't adjusted the uh, parking brake at all. It looks like I need to take a look at that. But as you can see, the tool worked. It didn't cost me any money. It just basically made it out of a puller I had in the garage, plus some scrap metal that I had. So that's one option to follow if you uh, don't have a proper tool. So we'll move on. All right, so you can see the condition of the parking brake on the inside of the disc there is not very good. And then obviously the metal is pretty much destroyed. Only again have about half of the uh, braking surface left on it. So definitely worn out. Wasn't braking very well anymore. And then I happened to have it at the garage getting a rear companion flange change and they told me that I should have a look at my brakes. They said it was going to be like $2,000 if they were going to change this. So I went ahead and did it myself where I'm working out towards getting it done anyway. So uh, we'll take a look at the parking brake on here. I had to force the uh, disc off because this adjuster wasn't turning. So there's a little rubber plug in the back of the uh, port here, just right behind the uh, star wheel. So I tried to reach in with the large tool. I couldn't really fit in there. There's not a lot of space to work. And then I tried to use this little guy and uh, I just was realizing I couldn't get this thing to turn. Although it is turning now, so that's funny. But anyway, I wasn't having a lot of success with that. So I just forced it off. So what I'm gonna do is kind of make a note of how everything is arranged and set up my replacement parts on the floor so I can grab them and put them back the way it needs to go. That way I don't need to kind of guess where things go from memory. I'll have everything sort of set up. You can also see like the uh, tone ring for the ABS. And traction control is there. There's some more springs and components on this side here. And it's kind of a tricky job to do because of the way the hub is designed. So I've set a lot of time aside to get this done. But the, the real laborious part was getting the disc off and that's done, so I'm happy with that. So uh, I'll just kind of get things set up here and cleaned. Obviously I've got to take off these uh, stainless sliders, chip off any rust that's here and file it down and clean it and uh, get these off. So we'll, we'll take a video again when I'm taking these off and I've got the other parts set up to take a look at them. All right, the rust removal on the guides seem to be a little more noteworthy than I thought it was going to be on this vehicle. So when you're doing the dust and rust removal, spray everything down with a bit of brake clean just so it doesn't uh, create dust. Then you'll see that there was a lot of buildup on here. And there's also some interesting profiles that you'll be able to see as we start working on this. So I found one thing that's helpful is a chisel, or not a chisel, but a file, can be used as a chisel because it's very hard. So you can kind of scrape the rust off there. And then even just kind of hitting it on the edge of the chisel with the file is a good way of removing rust. And again, just kind of going on an angle so you can get the most pressure you can out of the file. Because you're not trying to remove any sound metal. You just want to get rid of the bad stuff. So again, there's a, a profile on here that you want to clear out. And on the back side, there's also another one. Just kind of use the, the tip of the file. And you'll know that when it's digging in, that you've got all the rust off. Because the file doesn't really dig into rust, but it will on the uh, sound metal. Aside from that, I kind of got things set up for uh, putting the pieces together. So the kit has enough for uh, both sides. So you'll get the uh, adjuster in multiple parts. It might be a bit counterintuitive, but you can see the way the star wheel goes is at the bottom of the star is just pushing in on that slot. So I used some copper anti-seize on the threads of that. 
and put some in the bore of here. There is a drain hole in there and it appears to be facing down on the uh, passenger side. I assume that it's uh, the same on the driver's side but we don't know yet. So there's not a lot to it but obviously the parking brake cable comes into here and spreads things open so that's uh, going to be a bit of a trick. So I'm just going to turn off the music so we don't have any uh, problems with that and then we'll film some more. All right, so we'll take off the uh, springs now. You need to wear safety glasses doing this because you're putting a lot of force on things and you don't know what's going to happen. I do know someone who lost an eye doing this. So uh, definitely wear your safety glasses right now. So I ended up breaking that spring. That's all right. I'll do the probably the same on this side as well. I never try to save hardware kits. Because you don't know if you're going to need it, so you have to have it for when you start the job, so you might as well just use it. So that one we didn't break. Now we have to that back and over, which might be a little bit frustrating. make a tool for this where you need for turning it sideways but this is not that kind of pin. It's a little bit irritating. As you can see I need to somehow get this through. So you can see that's uh, the type of clip that came off. The one that's going on looks a little bit different. And that just goes through the backing plate. And as you can see, I bent that one. So that just came off. You'll see that the heavy bump goes where the adjuster is. I'll have to do the same with the bottom one. And I'm gonna look around and see if this uh, actuator is in good shape or not, it looks like it has a rolling ball on it that I need to loosen up. So uh, I'll clean that up and we'll get the camera going again. All right, so you can see right in here, that's the end of the uh, brake cable. So there's a component that goes on the end of the cable. This actually faces up, it goes in like this. But you can, there's a hook on the back of it that as you put it down, it hooks onto the uh, cable. So obviously this is a two-part component and it needs to be free. Mine moves a little bit. So I'm going to have to spend a bit of time uh, freeing this up so it moves around by gravity alone. And then I'll put a bit of uh, anti-seize on it and slop, slide it back in here. So anti-seize will be used in a number of locations, like wherever there's steel on steel rubbing like here on the end of the cable, down underneath. Then there's a couple points where the uh, brake shoe sits. There's like three spots, top and bottom, where we'll be putting the uh, anti-seize on. So uh, plan to pop these out and uh, spend a bit of time cleaning them up and making them work again. All right, so things are coming along. I put the grease on the three spots, top and bottom. Put the grease on uh, here and on the bottom that as well and on the end of the cable and then this piece I got this uh, to move nice and freely so I just used uh, a file I cleaned out the channel in there and kind of scraped off these pieces here 
And then on the cast part here, I beat off a bunch of uh, rust that was attached on the uh, sliding points. So uh, to get this part back on is a bit of a, a puzzle. Kind of got to grab the cable on the back, twist it, and then slide this down. You need to get the cable inside of the bracket. And then I need to get that claw to wrap around on the inside of the cable. It's a little bit fiddly, or a lot bit fiddly really. You'll figure it out. I don't know if the tension on the cable is significant or not. I got the hook inside of the cable now. You just kind of push it inside to grab that there. Then I tried a couple different things now to get these uh, brakes shoes on. And it's, it's tricky. So I think what we're going to do is uh, put the retaining clips on first and then put the springs on after. Because I've tried to put a spring on one side and put it on, and then one on this side and put it on. It's not been going very well. So it looks like to put these uh, clips on, you have to squeeze them with some long needle nose. These ones haven't been used much, they're in bad shape. Because you couldn't squeeze that with your finger, as I found out. Then the wide part goes where the adjuster is. That drops into here. This pin needs to slide through a hole in the back of the shoe. That's still loaded in there. And again, you gotta use glasses because this stuff is a pain. I think the kit that was on here previously was a better design. But you get what you get, you gotta make it work. Oh, it was close that time. I'd say it's pretty hard to look professional doing these little brake jobs. It takes a lot of experience to get this to work well. So just go along with it. And just don't get frustrated. The best mechanics don't get frustrated. Pretty close there. I don't know. Find a way to spin that pin at the same time as squeezing this clip. This doesn't seem like a very nice system. It's really hard to do. So anyway, I'll finish up with this off camera, then uh, we'll go on to putting springs after that. All right, so that was immensely difficult, especially for the bottom one, because there's nothing to hold it up. So uh, I've got that together. Now hopefully it holds together while I put in the next piece. Yeah, so no problem now. I'm able to get the adjuster in. On this side, the star is facing up. And there's no linkages on this for uh, auto resetting the uh, brake when you're backing up. So you don't need to worry about that. Again, you got our uh, safety glasses on. I'm gonna put this spring in on here. These are not the best pliers, as you can see. At least the spring didn't go flying away on me. 
Let's try a different pair of pliers. Alright, no big deal there. Now I got the big spring to do last. And the big question, are we going to pull up or pull down on it? We'll pull down. Got to stretch that like an inch. Exciting. You kind of have to put that spring in after because it needs to fit in behind this adjuster. I couldn't get it to slide through pre-attached. No doubt. This might be a good job for that uh, brake tool that I showed you. I'll try to hook onto it with that. this in a while to be honest. I have not used this in a long time. I'm sure you can see better than I can right now. It's not really how you're supposed to use it, but get this in position. Get things as close as you can. I think I got, I can't see. Again, more struggles. So obviously having the shoes tight against each other is half the battle. Nice and close. All right, another struggle I'm gonna have off camera and then I will uh, show you afterwards. All right, so it wasn't pretty, but I got that spring on there. Made sure that the uh, tensioner was seated properly. You wanna have these kinda tucked in here for when you put your rotor on. I'm trying to feel my wheel bearing here. I should have checked it before I took the wheel off to see if it was uh, tight or not. It feels kinda notchy. Just moving it like this with the backlash in the system you can see that the hub needs to be clean still, but that's uh, the finished product there on this side. Everything is in position, it's not out of step. So I'm just going to quickly clean off the hub here using my trusty file. It removes rust pretty quickly and easily. Make sure that the mating surface is nice and flat. The main mating surface is these two rings here. If there's anything protruding out in the middle, should get rid of that. And this is really important to do this. Otherwise you're not gonna get a new rotor to sit on properly. Now you just put in a bit more anti-seize on here. I'm put some on the actual rotor. I already test fit this to make sure it was on. So you might as well back your uh, parking brake in all the way. 
for what I found out. And hopefully by putting on this anti-seize and having coated rotors, I won't have uh, as much trouble the next time I have this off, which I assume will be when I come back to do the wheel bearings whenever the wheels start getting loose on me if they're not already. So you can see that's on nicely there. Now you could start to uh, adjust the parking brake now. It's preferred if you have both back wheels off the ground when you're setting that so you can actually spin the wheel properly. Just wondering where my wheel hardware is. I picked that up and put it somewhere. So you could put uh, lug nuts on here now just to kind of center things and adjust your parking brake. for my other socket. Awesome. These aren't deep enough. So you do that to kind of get your uh, drum and rotor centered. And then at that point you'd reach into the back and you'd adjust that star wheel just so you feel a little bit of drag and then back it off a little bit. But like I said, it's better if you have both back wheels off the ground so you can kind of spin them. You get a feeling for it. It's even better if you have the uh, wheel on. So I'm not going to do the adjustment right now, but we'll start putting the uh, brake hardware back on at this point. Alright, so there's a couple of things that kind of have to happen at the same time as you're putting the vehicle back together. So one thing is you'll take some of this uh, compound that you buy separately and wipe it on the uh, cast parts here and then place the uh, stainless sliders over top of that and they clip into the uh, ridges that you dug out earlier as you're cleaning things up. You'll also want to remove these uh, pins. As you can see, it doesn't want to slide very well. So you've got to pop the rubber off on each end and push it through. And then you'll take this and kind of clean it up and put some grease on it. So I'm going to do that off camera. That's fairly straightforward. And then uh, you'll have to put the wheel spacer on as well. if you have wheel spacers. So I clean this off with a, uh, a file. I did a video on that separately, but I'll just show you quickly. So again, just go off across it and looking for any major blemishes. I uh, hit it a bit too hard with that hammer when I was taking it off. So I had to clean the uh, surface in a few spots. Otherwise, it is good to go. So I have to put on some red Loctite on these threads. So this is 262. Sorry, sometimes it won't come out, sometimes you get too much. So we're going to torque these now and then we'll, I'll have to torque them again later. As you saw at the beginning of the video I showed uh, the value in doing that because you will find that you've got issues. You want to make sure that these are centered in the holes. You could run the uh, nuts down again and kind of get them in position. Get the other one. 
buttons on here. I'm just going to use the impact and start to snug these up a little bit. Not too much. Again, I got a rubber or plastic hammer here just to kind of set things. They can get bound up and you won't, they won't loosen without a bit of tap. Then you could just check again by hand and see if you got any extra. Looks like they were pretty good. So I got my fork wrench set to 90. You can see how I'm Probably a bit too close. But you support it like this. Now let's go all the way around again. Make sure that everything is good. Tighten up there. We'll take a look at the uh, brake pads now that we're getting closer. So you'll see that this one goes into the uh, actual brake piston. And it kind of sits like that. And this one has a scratcher. It's on the outboard. I prefer if it was on the inboard, but it's not for whatever reason. Put that in like that, but I have to put some of the uh, slide grease on here and kind of hook that up to the uh, caliper. So I'm just going to clean up those caliper pins and pop them back in and then we'll uh, be one step closer to wrapping this up. Alright, we're just about to, done this job now. So I've put the uh, special grease on the uh, pads where I intend to have that. Going to, I've also changed the uh, grease on these uh, pins. That was fairly easy, just push them out as you saw. So this uh, pad gets loaded into the uh, piston. I've been fooling around to do that, but that is done. So just, uh, Drop that into position. You gotta pull these pins back as far as you can. Let's see. I guess we need to uh, put this on here. And these uh, pads have uh, material on them for preventing them from squeaking, so you don't need to put anything on these. There's some indexing holes here and here, so that all kind of slides together. Then we're going to kind of load this, make sure I haven't got the hoses spun around or anything. Load this from the bottom. Up. 
pin's not in the right position. Push that back. Yeah, just gotta work with that pin. Both pins. So I popped off the wire here for the ABS, put that back on. You put the two bolts back in. I haven't checked the master cylinder to see if it's uh, completely full yet, but I think that it's probably close to overflowing at this point. So I'll need to verify that. And then pump the brakes a couple times to seat this piston before I move on to the next side. This is pretty much the end of the job. I got to put the wheel back on, obviously, so I just need to clean the wheel, mating faces, put a bit of uh, copper anti-seize on the center of the wheel, torque that on, then again, come back to it after a short drive and retorque this. I have a feeling I'll be doing the wheel bearings on this soon. At least I'll know how to do this for that point because everything needs to come off again to do the wheel bearings, unfortunately. This is a 12 millimeter wrench again. Not certain of the torque. Not too much, not too little. You get a feeling for it. If you don't have the experience, you want to look up the torque value to make sure you don't lose a wheel. So everything looks like it's uh, good and aligned. So uh, thank you for watching.